Here we're going to cover the light tool and any discussion about the light tool will generally overlap the rendering part of this DVD so I will try to keep this overlap to a minimum. The light tool would generally have two main functions. Firstly to assist in creating an accurate virtual building model that will assist all types of architects including interior designers and interior architects with all their documentation. And secondly as an enhancement tool to assist the architect or architectural artist create scenes that can reflect the mood or design intent to others through rendering of stunning images. Any rendering can be a work of art, placing the right type of lighting and placing enough of them, finding the right angles, etc, etc. Firstly, with the light tool, I've just created a little scene here and placed a number of different lights, but in the toolbox, under the design section, the last tool down here is the lamp tool. This is where all of our lights reside. If I click on that, the default settings all fill in over here. and there's our light tool again, our layer combinations, layers. If I left mouse click on these buttons here, I can scroll through all the lights in a loaded library. Next we have the geometry method of placing the lamps and basically a lamp is a type of library object and the placement methods are identical. So I'll click back on the lamp. Over here, the floor plan and section. What I might do is grab all these lamps at the moment by going Control A or Apple A. And then just so we can see it a bit better I'm going to scroll the floor plan and section bar over a little bit I'm going to left mouse click on that I'm going to disable the objects line types and pens and I want to use these line types and I might use this color pen so we can see all the lights a bit more clearly I'm just going to click on the white space there and deselect by left mouse clicking in the wide open area there now I still have access to other parameters through the info box here but I'm going to go through them through the main palette so if I double click on that icon there first up we have a view of all the libraries that are loaded at the moment if there is a lamp that is not in this library and we want to use it in this project we can load another lamp by either opening the library manager then finding the light and loading it or we can go onto the web as well we can also change the way we view the loaded libraries and we can also find library parts by typing in and push find but if I just go back to the folder view over here we have different ways we can look at all the library parts once again and it's up to you how you want to view these I might just collapse this there is also a huge selection of lights and light types here from general ceiling lamps, desk lamps fluorescent lamps and ceiling lamps all sorts of lights in there as well as street lamps and if you can't find one that's suitable here you can always try the web as a number of manufacturers that are putting GDL library parts onto their website is growing all the time now there are really three types of lights the first sort of light is just a general light source where we actually have no fitting as such but they're just a place where light is generated from. We have an actual light fitting like an interior light, fluorescent lights, ceiling lights and street lamps they're in the same category and we also have lightworks lights which we'll go over in a second. So generally speaking if I just change to the general light settings most of the general lights have no 3D representation and what this means is that if I just flick to the 3D we can see that it's a general light source and we can see the shape of each of these lights and where they're generated from. The interior lamps or the street lamps they actually have 3D representation which means you can actually see the light fitting and street lamps are the same. So if I go back to the general lights we'll notice that each type of light has different settings. Some of the lights have fairly limited range of variables and others have quite a few. If we're actually on the shaded view preview option we can actually see the type of light that's being emitted. I think the important things to look out for here are ways of controlling the inner light cone and the angle of the inner light cone and the external light cone which this particular light does have. We have the angle of the inner light cone and the angle of the outer light cone and it's always good to have 
show the light cone in 3D. So if I actually drop one of these lights on the floor plan, I'll put this one over here. And if I go to the 3D window, I'm going to go to 3D window in the internal rendering engine. To make this part of it easy, I'm going to left mouse click on the status bar up the top here. And this works on Windows as well. Then I'm going to show the 3D visualization palette. And then that opens up there. So here we've got the 3D window settings, internal engine, analytic, analytic, and best. If I push OK, and now I go to the 3D window here, we can see here's my light that I just placed here. Now I'm just going to move this up a little bit so I can see it. And over here we can see the light cones. So if I go to my arrow tool, I can actually grab the light and by selecting this icon here I can change the angle of the inner cone and the outer cone. Now if I render that, first of all I might change to OpenGL and we can have a look at the differences there. So over here I can do the same thing here, it's just another way of looking at it. And if I render this, first of all I'm going to render it using the internal rendering engine. And I'm just going to push OK and let it render. Now we can see that light has little or no effect there. However, if I change or move that light down, if we can if we can grab that light and we can see that that light is only throwing light for 3 meters and we can see that the light is 4 meters high. So if I change this to 4.5 meters and keep the intensity high. OK. Now I'm going to render it again. We can see the inner light cone there, which is a bit more intense, but the outer light cone is very gentle. So if I change that to a Lightworks rendering engine and push OK and render it again. we'll see that that light's a bit more dramatic. I've actually placed this with emitting a red light and on this side of the image we can see that we have the reflection of the light source. We can't actually see a light but we see the reflection of it which is why I put it near the glass but we can see that that is emitting a yellow light. So to achieve that result I might just go to the floor plan and open this up and over here we can see the color that it is emitting is red. I can double click on there and change the color to anything I like. I might change it to a blue now. And over here, the other light source, which is just the general light source, is emitting a yellow color here. So I'm going to leave, I'll just leave that as it is. And I'm going to delete the down light. And in the photo rendering settings, up until this point I've been rendering without the sun so we can see the effect of the lights a bit more. However, if I do have lights on in there, I might take that down to 10% because the camera always has a light by default. I might turn the sun on but don't put it at 100 because there'll be too much light in the scene. So I'm just going to change that down to, put that down to 40% and I'm going to push OK then I'm going to render it. Now I'm using the Lightworks rendering engine and if you have a dual processor machine, either a Mac dual processor or a PC, it actually takes advantage of the dual processors. Now we can see the light there is blue and we can see the yellow light there and we've got a bit more light around the top of our scene because we've got the sun on. Be careful not to put too much sun into your scenes. Just to illustrate the last type of light, the Lightworks lights, I'll place a couple just quickly. So first of all, hit the lamp object. I might do it in the floor plan. And click on the Lightworks lights. And first of all, I'm going to put a sky object down. I'm going to turn the intensity down because I don't want it too bright. Because in essence, it is a sun type object. And 
hit a sky object and I'm going to bring that down to 26%. There's a whole list of variables there as well which we'll cover in the rendering part of the DVD and I push OK and I'm just placing that anywhere. These lights don't show up in any window other than this window here but the effect is very clear in the photo render window. So now if I go there I'm going to turn the sun off because there will be too much light otherwise and I'm going to push OK. We're in the Lightworks rendering engine. Push OK. Then I'm just going to photo render it. Here we can see that the shadows are softer now because of the Lightworks components and there's a nice day type glow to it. There's a bit too much light from this light still and there's probably not enough from this one but what I might do is change that center light and just render it with I'm going to turn this light down a little I might do this from the floor plan again and I'm going to change that to a favorite so four spot light just for something a bit different we can see the light cones there there's quite a few lights there and this light here I'm going to turn right down and I'm just going to render that one more time. There we can see the effect of that four spotlight. Lighting effects is very nice. And that's all we're going to spend on lights. But we, we can see that we've got a number of different environments. We've got the OpenGL environment. I haven't touched on the sketch rendering environment but we've also got the Lightworks environment to actually render in and we also have the three types of lights, the Lightworks lights, the light sources and the actual light fittings that generate light as well. So there's quite a bit there to play with and a lot of different ways to achieve hopefully some nice results and some nice renderings.